YouTube Nation, this is Dark Dividend. If you guys are new to my YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. So yesterday I bought a cheap stock, a very good dividend growth stock. I'm going to explain to you my rationales as to why I bought it. And man, the market is taking a hit. So I had to capitalize on this and go in. So if you're new to this YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. Smash that like button. Let's check this cheap dividend stock out right now. That cheap stock I bought was Key Corp. I'll reveal to you how many shares I bought and my estimated dividend income with all these shares that I have with Key Corp. It's sitting at 1072. It has a dividend yield of 7.65%. That is high, so I am aware that things can go bad. Look at this. In the past five years, okay, it's down 46.10% as compared to the S&P, which was 48.59% up. So in the past five years, man, it was like, it was getting there. It was kind of close with the S&P. Took a huge nosedive during the pandemic. Its low was 919. Before the pandemic hit, it was 1973. And it's still struggling, so I'm capitalizing. PE ratio is 7.15. The average volume is 13.28 million. The market cap is 10.03 billion US dollars. The tier range is 854 to 2030. Oh yeah, I'm capitalizing on that for sure. Day range is 1062 to 1106, and its previous close was 1104. So I'm going to explain to you my rationales as to why I buy Key Corp. The Wikipedia made this like 10 times easier to sum everything up. So KeyBank is the primary subsidiary of KeyCorp. So I actually have a KeyBank cashback card. The American Regional Bank headquartered in Cleveland, Ohio, and is only the major bank based in Cleveland. KeyBank is one of the largest banks in the United States. So bigger is better, if you ask me. Key's customer base spans in retail, small businesses, corporate, commercial, and investment clients. KeyBank maintains over 1,000 branches and over 40,000 ATMs, which are in 15 states, Alaska, Colorado, Connecticut, Delaware, Florida, Idaho, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, Minnesota, New Jersey, New York, Ohio, Oregon, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, Texas, Utah, Vermont, Virginia, Washington, D.C., and Washington. Key Corp maintains its business offices in 39 states. He is ranked 449th, 449th on the 2022 Fortune 500 list based on this 2021 revenue. I am trying to wake up. Got some Starbucks coffee here. And by the way, Starbucks just announced a dividend hike. I'm going to go over that in a future video. So one thing I want to also go over are some key things. So we're going to look at revenue, net income, uh, earnings per share. That's very important as well. So we'll go over that. The one thing I like about Key Corp is their increase in revenue every year. So this is annually in millions US dollars. 2016, 5,390. 2017, 6,868. 2018, 7,393. 2019, 7,694. 2020, I'll blame the pandemic, 7,337. 2021, 7,561, and 2022, 8,130. So its revenue has done well. I'll go over some quarterly um, information and some uh, earnings reports shortly, but I'm gonna go over a few more um, in-depth um, things that help me really um, hold on to Key Corp and buy more shares. So it's important to understand terminology as well. So revenue can be defined as the amount of money a company receives from its customers in exchange for sales of goods and services. Revenue is the top line item on an income statement from which all costs and expenses are subtracted to arrive at net income. So their annual revenue in 2020 was 7.337 billion, a 4.5 
6.4% decline in 2019. Okay, blame the pandemic. Their annual revenue in 2021 was $7.561 billion, a 3.05% increase from 2020. The annual revenue for 2022 was $8.13 billion, a 7.53% increase from 2021. Revenue for the 12 months ending in June 30th, 2023 was $9.544 billion, a 26.7 increase year over year. And then the revenue for the quarter ending in June 30th, 2023 was $2.619 billion, a 39.23% increase year over year. So that is very good. Let's go over a few more things. So a few things we have to be aware of is net income. So their annual net income for 2020 was $1.237 billion, a decline from 2019. Okay, that's pandemic. The annual net income in 2021 was $2.519 billion, a 103.64 increase from 2020. Their net income in 2022 was $1.799 billion, a 28.58% decline from 2021. Their net income in the 12 months ending in June 30th, 2023 was $1.398 billion, a 34.95% decline year over year. Their net income for the quarter ending in June 30th, 2023 was $0.251 billion, a 50.49% decline year over year. So net income is important because it can be defined as a company's net profit or loss after all revenues, income items, and expenses have been accounted for. So that's one thing that ha you have to be aware of. So that's why I go over everything, okay? But, you know, with the volatility right now with the regional banks, I feel confident in buying them. So I'm going to go over the earnings per share. And with these regional banks, you have to be very careful and do your due diligence with buying them. I feel very confident in buying these guys and I'm going to continue to buy them. Earnings per share can be defined as a company's net earnings or losses attributable to common shareholders per diluted share base, which includes all convertible securities, debt, options, and warrants. Earnings per share, 2020 was one or 1 or $1.27, a 21.6% decline from 2019. 2021, the annual earnings per share was 263 a 107.09 increase from 2020. E-Corp annual earnings per share was 193, a 26.62% decline from 2021. Earnings per share in the 12 months ending in June 30th, 2023, it was $1.51, a 33.77% decline year over year. E-Corp earnings per share for the quarter ending in June 30th, 2023, was 27 cents, a 50% decline year over year. So you have to be very um, cautious with making uh, these type of decisions. And I still really like these guys. And the one thing that has me still buying them is their size. If they didn't have a lot of size and they weren't big, I don't know if I would have considered buying them. So I'm going to go over a few trends as well. I also want to go over one more thing is their gross profit. The gross profit can be defined as the profit a company makes after deducting the variable costs directly associate, associated with making and selling its products or providing its services. The annual gross profit in 2020 was $6.86 billion, a 4.99% increase from 2019. Gross profit in 2021 was $7.265 billion, 8.66% increase from 2020. The gross profit in 2022 was $7.245 billion, a 0.28% decline from 2021. The gross profit for the 12 months ending in June 30th, 2023 was $7.064 billion, a 2.3% decline year over year. Gross profit for the quarter ending in June 30th, 2023 was $1.587 billion. 11.09% decline year over year. So I wanted to go over that, but I'm going to show you their earnings per share a little bit and their trends, which is not too bad. So studying their trends, and again, the financial sector, you have to be very careful with, with some of your purchases because there can be a risk of a dividend cut. A lot of REITs are taking a hit as well. I'm going after the financial sector 
and real estate sector for this reason because they're taking a beating. And could it blow up in my face? Absolutely. But hey, I'm going after them and I like what I see because there's a lot of red. So here's our quarterly um, earnings per share for the past 12 months and the trailing uh, 12 months. So it was 12 cents, 17, 57, 73, 65, 54, 55, 39, 30, 27. And then the trailing 12 months, 115, 127, 176, 232, 256, 247, 228, 218, 193, 178, and then 151. Or, and again, um, their trends have slowly increased over time, which increases my confidence. So you're, I'm seeing more trends up. Now it looks like a slope up and down. But again, it's slowly going up and then it goes back down. But consistency is key. And I know we're in a weird market right now. And um, everybody's warning of these things of a recession. You know, I'm, I'm not giving any financial advice. I'm not an economic uh, analyst or expert. So I can't really say that. But, you know, with these dips, I'm definitely capitalizing on them. So I'm going to jump to their dividend history. So I'm going to start in 2011. It was three cents. This is quarterly distribution, 2012, five cents, 2013, six cents, 2014, seven cents, 2015, eight cents, 2016, nine cents, 2017, 10 cents to 11 cents, 2018, 12 cents, and they jumped to 17 cents, 2018 and 2019, then to 19 cents, and they were a little stagnant. You can blame the pandemic. 2021, they were 20 cents, and they cracked uh, 21 cents in 2022 and 2023. So according to Zach's, they have a payout ratio of 50%. So that's not too bad for what's going on. The dividend increases in the last five years is three. The dividend growth in five years is 3.91%. If you bought one share, you made 82 cents with a 7.65% dividend yield. So that's not too bad, but it's definitely a buy at a discount. And that's why I went over that and explained my rationales as to why I bought some key corp shares. Now, I'm really targeting the real estate sector because they're going um, taking a beating. But the other uh, banks I've been buying, uh, or financial sector stocks, regional banks, I've been targeting them as well. And some of them are an SCHD ETF. So the symbol is K-E-Y. I just want to go over that. Um, I'm going to go over my disclaimer um, in the next like minute or so, but I really want to sum up um, why I'm going after the real estate sector and financial sector. They are taking a beating and they're not going after, uh, and they're not, comp excuse me, chasing the S&P 500, which is very attractive for me as a dividend investor to capitalize on. If you're new to this YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so don't miss future videos. I'm going to try to squeeze a video in tomorrow. Make sure you hit that notification bell if you're new to this channel. You guys take care and have a great Friday and go Bucks. So as a reminder, this channel is for entertainment purposes only. I'm going over my disclaimer. Do not take this YouTube channel in any form of financial advice. And it's best to seek financial advice from an investment advisor or somebody that is certified to give financial advice. I am not, I do not give any financial advice. So that if you are looking to make a um, financial decision, it's best to do your due diligence and to seek financial advice from a financial advisor. So investing is a big risk. You can gain money, you can lose money when you make any purchase with a stock. Very transparent with my dividend stock buys. I have a investing strategy that is unique. And I really um, love the way you guys interact with me on my channel. Um, I'm will explain my rationales as to why I buy stocks from enter, from an entertainment standpoint. You guys take care and have a good one. So unfortunately, there was a YouTube processing error, so I had to add this part at the end of the video. But I'll show you how many shares I own and um, how I'm doing actually owning a key corp. So we'll check that out.
So right now I have a total of 444.988 shares. My total gain is negative $1,601.29. My total gain went down 25.13%. The financial sector is taking a hit. And look at my total unrealized gain down almost 10%. So the real estate sector and financial sector is taking a beating. Now for me, since that's red, I'm going in. And usually the market fixes itself over time. Again, I have a disclaimer earlier in the video, but um, you know I don't try to challenge the stock market because it can blow up in your face. I was actually beating the S and P really well before, like everything took a huge nosedive. I mean, look at Realty Income taking a hit right now. So I'll go over my estimated income with um, Key Corp, and with Key Corp, my estimated Dividend income is at $91.22. So I'm getting very close to earning $100 quarterly in dividend income. So I wanted to show you guys how many shares I own and what I plan on doing with that. And just to show you how bad the financial sector and real estate sector took a hit. So I hope you enjoyed my video. And again, subscribe for future videos.